I got into refereeing uh, after I broke my neck uh, when I was 19, and that ends your contact sport career. I was living in Wellington at the time and uh, basically thought, well, I don't do anything on Saturdays anymore because all of my friends still play rugby. Uh, and I just thought, well, I might as well give refereeing a go because um, hopefully no one's going to be uh, trying to tackle me uh, when I'm refereeing. <laughs> My refereeing, I've actually been refereeing for a long time now. And I, there was, at least when I started, there was kind of uh, being young and reasonably fit, people were very excited about, you know, potentially shifting me up uh, the ranks very fast. They quickly realized that um, my level of, uh, that kind of um, I didn't have the the mental toughness and I was quite aware of this as well that to become a you know a top level referee particularly quickly um, so then I kind of uh, and because I moved around the country a lot I moved from Wellington to Dunedin and to, in my second season and then back to Wellington in my third and then I moved up to Auckland and I've moved around all the time it basically meant that kind of once I wasn't really exciting I kind of stagnated um, and yeah moving from association to association didn't really help any. A coach briefly um, in 2015 after I went to a, a tournament in Sydney and met up with um, Ian Smith, who lives over there, and he offered to be my coach, but there wasn't actually a great option because I was living in Auckland, um, and while he was really good at uh, providing, you know, email discussions, he was never really uh, able to actually watch me referee. So it was, I wasn't getting a lot of, uh, you know, in. Uh, objective feedback it was all about what I'd reported to him and it just kind of petered out because it wasn't really uh, working for either of us so then that was uh, kind of another few years it took about four more years to get a coach uh, again when in Dane yeah um, when I was kind of introduced to Dane as a coach um, things were not going well with my refereeing my um I have uh reasonably severe anxiety and that was actually despite the fact I'd been refereeing by then for eight or nine years it was actually getting worse on the field um and I just felt like I didn't have a lot of well I had a lot of kind of support and like in the system, I didn't have any kind of real personal support uh, for that. Um, so we're, you know, learning a lot about the rules and getting all of uh, that kind of, of feedback, but I also, but I wasn't getting a lot of, you know, being, talking about, you know, how the games on the weekends were making me feel, how I was feeling building up to a game uh, going forward and things like that. We actually ended up, um, the whole thing came about that uh, I went out after a tournament um, to a bar and we're having a few drinks with Cody and a couple of other guys and Dane was talking about all of the reasons he was not, not really feeling great about his own refereeing. Um, and saying that he wanted to, you know, start doing more coaching. And when I listened to him talk about his own experience with refereeing, I was like, wow, no, this is like so close to what I'm feeling all of the time with my refereeing. It's just that he's in, you know, the premier panel uh, and I'm kind of 
floundering down at the bottom. And so when he offered to be my coach, um, I was like, yeah, that would be great because I could feel like actually he knows where I'm coming from. Um, even though we're very different people, we had the same kind of reactions to being, uh, to having a, a tougher time on the field than we kind of felt like we should have been. I'm just like, I'm way more confident uh, than I was. I think most of uh, what I get from Dane, along with the, you know, the usual things about positioning, which is always going to be a weird one for me and things like that, is that I get a lot of, like, uh, uh, he's really been able to boost my confidence because I will come, I used to come off the field thinking that I'd done really badly. I had no objective way of assessing if I'd done well or not um so when he was able to tell me actually yeah you stuffed up a couple of things but the rest of it was good and also when i was moving like in the build-up kind of thursday friday before games being able to meet up with him and have basically have him tell me actually you know you're capable of doing this you're gonna be it'll be fine and you know even if it's horrible at the time the end of the game everyone's going to walk off no one you know it's not going to be the end of the world for anyone including you so just uh relax try to enjoy it even if you can't enjoy it kind of find little bits and ways of uh not feeling as bad as you um as i might have and then, yeah, it, it just really helps to be able to have that kind of uh, emotional and uh, kind of psychological support as well as, you know, the technical side of things. Now with my refereeing, I've finally, in, for the first time in my entire refereeing career, gotten a panel promotion, which is great. But I'm also just actually enjoying myself a lot more I was kind of doing I think I was uh, in you know 2018 2019 I was really doing refereeing just because it had become something that I always did not because I actually enjoyed doing it um, so now I'm actually enjoying myself um, I'm refereeing better uh, my confidence is just way more and yeah I've been working towards getting a promotion for ages and again have not helped myself because I move constantly apparently um and COVID and things but yeah it's uh particularly kind of towards the end of last season it was like actually I'm I, I was able to come off and be able to think actually I did pretty well here things are I, I am definitely improving which is an attitude that I hadn't ever really had before um, I suppose to for coaches that um, not every referee is going to be a superstar uh, and you can probably tell and but also I think every referee is capable of improvement and also there's a lot of you know there are a lot of coaches who are quite really good technically but um, for a lot of referees, the problem isn't that they're technically bad. It's that they are, you know, they don't have the confidence that they project or they don't have a real objective understanding of how they are on the field, not because they think that they're great, but they actually come off and think that they're terrible. And it's quite hard to get them to talk about that because it doesn't feel like, you know, feels a bit weird so to try and spend that time with uh someone else and also get a lot of and being able to go actually i'm not just gonna when you don't do as well as you know we think that people might want might uh or should be doing don't then just kind of drop them and move away because that just uh, gives you a bit more of the uh, your inferiority complex. 
So um, Dane's really good that he's not, like he'll, um, is very, uh, like I know that he's always kind of available and if I get in touch, but he's also knows that I get stressed about phone calls and all of this kind of thing. So it's very much like actually, just get in touch with me and we'll meet up and we'll just sit and we'll have a chat rather than kind of requiring a lot of structure, which I would have just found more stressful.